I'm announcing today that my office has reached a comprehensive settlement in the lawsuit we brought in May against the Academy of Art University. The Academy has pledged to file an application for a development agreement with the planning department today. That is the first step in a process that will put this proposed settlement before the Planning Commission uh, and the Board of Supervisors for approval. This was a case where the Academy, a privately held for-profit company, amassed a real estate empire while thumbing its nose for a decade at planning and building department code requirements. These are requirements that every other San Francisco property owner must follow. Again and again, the Academy's use of the properties it acquired was unauthorized, unpermitted, or wholly prohibited by local law. These included converting residential and tourist hotels into student housing and turning retail and industrial spaces into academic buildings. The Academy repeatedly flouted even basic land use requirements involving code permitted usages, <coughs> signage, historical preservation, environmental review, and more. Earlier this year, fully 33 of the Academy's 40 properties failed to comply with permit, entitlement, authorization, or related requirements. Of those, 22 had undergone the notice of violation process and were included in my lawsuit. But of particular concern was that the Academy and its web of affiliated companies had acquired residential properties only to illegally convert them into student dorms and facilities. This was housing that San Franciscans desperately needed in the midst of an affordable housing crisis. Now, through our efforts, this company has finally agreed to be part of the solution rather than a major contributor to the problem. This is a landmark <coughs> settlement in city history, and it does a number of key things both now and for as long as the Academy operates. But at the top of the list is providing at least 160 units of affordable housing, so city residents, at no cost to taxpayers. As part of the deal, half of that housing must be ready for tenants to move into in 18 months. This will provide a tangible benefit to some of the most vulnerable San Franciscans, our low-income seniors. This settlement, once approved, will also require the Academy to pay a total of $20 million in cash, some in penalties, and a significant part of which will go towards keeping low-income tenants in their homes, consumer protection enforcement, transportation, and other benefits for San Franciscans. This settlement will also govern how the Academy houses its students, linking enrollment to the amount of available housing the company has and requiring a higher percentage of its students to be housed on campus to limit pressure on the neighboring housing supply. The settlement will also make it easier for everyone to get around on our streets by requiring the Academy to provide muni passes to students and staff, enhance bicycle parking, and limit its fleet of private buses to routes not easily served by transit. The settlement we reached is valued to San Francisco taxpayers at more than $60 million. That takes into account both the $20 million in penalties and other payments the Academy would provide and what the city would need to invest to get the same affordable housing benefit, which is valued at $40 million. Putting this in context, this $60 million settlement would be by far the largest award the city has ever secured in a code enforcement case. The $20 million cash portion alone exceeds any monetary judgment or settlement the city has obtained in a code case. Most importantly, the investment in affordable housing is unprecedented in city history in a code enforcement case. This deal is a win for San Francisco's vulnerable residents, a win for sustainable growth, and a win for the rule of law. It is a global resolution of the Academy's land use issues, and the city obtains a number of benefits, including the affordable housing that we could not have attained through the courts alone. Six months ago, in this room, I noted that the Academy of Art University was San Francisco's most egregious land use scoff law. The Academy and its real estate affiliates behaved for more than a decade like the rules didn't apply to them. With our lawsuit and the agreement we've hammered out, we've ensured those days are over and that the Academy will live by their agreement to do right by the people of San Francisco. I look forward to the Academy taking this new path, one where they follow the, rule, the rules and are a positive influence in their hometown. At the same time, we're mindful of history. And that is why this deal includes teeth to make sure not only that it is followed now, but in the future as well. More specifically, some 37 business and en entities affiliated with the Academy will all be responsible for fulfilling the financial obligations to pay the penalties, fees, and provide affordable housing. Importantly, 
Those financial obligations are also secured by a guarantee that includes Elisa Stevens, the president of the Academy, and the Stevens Family Trust. And a cornerstone of the agreement for me is that it includes an injunction covering any other properties the Academy may use in the future to ensure compliance with the planning code. Also, ongoing court oversight in the form of a consent judgment is included to ensure compliance. Our work here sends a clear message. No matter how wealthy or politically connected you may be, the same rules apply to everyone. This comprehensive settlement proposal would bring the Academy into compliance with, city regula with all city regulations while providing the taxpayers of San Francisco with improvements we could not obtain, obtain through a court judgment, like the transportation and dedicated affordable housing benefits. And one thing I would like to do before I finish is to really thank Judge Harold Kahn from the San Francisco Superior Court, who I will say uh, held everybody's feet to the fire to make sure that um, we all negotiated in good faith and we came up with a result uh, that was a win-win uh, for everybody. You all have the details in the term sheet, the more specific details, but those are, that's a broad outline of the agreement. I'm happy that you're all here today, and I'd like to turn the floor over to uh, uh, Planning Director uh, John Rand to say a few words. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks, everyone. Um, I just want to, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to be at this moment in time. Um, if you guys just move it that way just a little, just because the light's hitting you in the face, I'm trying to okay. make sure you guys are... Um, I'm very pleased to be here at this moment in time. This has been a multi-year problem, um, and we have... Uh, still on you. We're sorry. trying to find a spot. Really good. Really good. It's supposed to be. <laughs> We're going to find a spot. Sorry. All right. You don't need to be over here, as I said. Yeah, if you go that way, a little, little more. A little more, a little more. Is it the podium? It just is awkward. Change. Yeah, it's just a curtain. Yeah, it's 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 a curtain. Yeah, move the podium. Which way? Let's all face down. Huh? See how it's just going with the heads? How about this way? Is this better? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's do that since the mic is on this side. So, let's start again. Very pleased to be at this point. This has been a multi-year issue that we have been tr struggling to resolve um, for many years, and I'm very pleased that we are at the point of a settlement. I really want to thank the city attorney's office who has done an incredible job in negotiating this agreement with us and the mayor's office of housing, Olson Lee in particular. I also just want to give a shout out to my uh, zoning administrator, Sandy Sanchez, who has been very integrally involved in this process for a long time. Um, as Mr. Herrera said, this is, a, this is a point in time that is really important for us to get a handle on these issues. The housing crisis is real, and the, the most critical factor that we think in this in this settlement is the provision of affordable housing and the provision of funds to help stabilize existing affordable housing. Both, both of those aspects are part of the agreement. It's very important for us, and it was important to me personally as well as the whole team that we resolved that issue. So um, I'm very pleased to be at this point. Again, my thanks to the entire team who did a great job on this, and uh, pleased to answer any questions. Thanks. All right. With that, we'll open the floor for questions. Anybody has questions? Yeah, how hard was this to, uh, to settle? It? How hard did you have to fight? You said the judge held everybody's feet to the fire, so how, how, how big a uh, fight was it? Well, I, listen, this fight uh, has been going on for the better part of a decade between uh, the city and the Academy of Art. Uh, you should, uh, by virtue of the fact that we were forced to bring a lawsuit, can, uh, should tell you uh, that this was not going to be an easy matter to resolve. Otherwise, it would have been resolved much earlier at the administrative level. Uh, I would say that once the litigation was filed, uh, uh, the negotiation took months, uh, and by the nature of its complexity uh, and the number of issues that are dealt with, you can see that it was uh, not an easy thing to negotiate because it was so multi-pronged. And there were, uh, there were lots of uh, ups and downs and fits and starts, so I would say it was one of the more difficult negotiations that this office has been involved in. So 18 months, so what... Is that the soonest that people were going to be able to move in? Yeah, because if you look uh, in detail, the two parcels that um, are identified in the term sheet, there's some new con there's uh, uh, conversion and new construction that needs to happen, new development. Uh, so uh, that would be the earliest that uh, people would have the ability to move in. If, 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 if the work was completed earlier, fine, but uh, that would be the earliest. And on a sliding scale, or what? Excuse me, sorry, I better just try to move. Sliding scale, or, or how is it that people are going to be able to have access to this affordable housing? Well, uh, the Academy of Art, if you look, is going to make uh, arrangements 
uh, with a nonprofit <coughs> uh, housing developer to do the management of uh, the project and uh, uh, the allocation of spots. But one thing you can be sure of, it's going to go to our most vulnerable residents, seniors, who are prim primary focus. Other questions? Yeah, the, the academy, what was their grounds for fighting? Well, I think that uh, the grounds for fighting it, they had some strongly held views, Phil, on a number of their properties uh, that uh, uh, they were in compliance with the law. We differed with that. Uh, they also had, uh, quite frankly, uh, thought it, in my opinion, better to ask for forgiveness than permission, uh, which is not you know, a bad strategy if you, you don't have confidence that people are going to follow up and uh, hold your feet to the fire. And that's something that we were not willing collectively to do. Uh, so yeah, those are my thoughts. But you'll have to, I think, speak with them to get a better sense of their motivations. But that's how I feel it came about. Other questions? Yeah, can you give us a breakdown on the fines and, and money real quick? Yeah, it's $20 million. Uh, we paid over five years. It's going to go to a variety of things. Uh, a big, a, the most important part for me is the $7 million that will go to fund uh, the city small sites program. That is a program that provides funding to nonprofits and community organizations to purchase properties for uh, low-income and vulnerable residents. Six million dollars uh, will um, go to enhance community uh, consumer protection enforcement done by the city attorney's office. Uh, the, the balance, I believe, will go to the planning department for fees and uh, penalties and the like. So that's the breakdown, correct? And impact fees. And impact fees. So it'll go to th it's three buckets. I understand there's something regarding uh, transportation as well in this? There is. A big, uh, listen, <laughs> uh, there have been a lot of frustrations about uh, the Academy of Art University buses that are all around town. This uh, agreement in uh, large measure addresses that. And not just with respect to the buses, but how it uh, jives and coordinates with the overall growth of the Academy of Art University. So there are a couple of components. Number one, in terms of managing future growth and ensuring that uh, any future housing actually matches, uh, or how many students matches about available housing, and that those uh, how th that housing has to be available on on campus, as it were, and that then the transportation matches what the university's needs are, and that there's a coordination with the planning department to make sure that, 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 that the transit fleet matches what, with what city requirements are and is dedicated on uh, existing transit routes and the like, and it just doesn't go uh, willy-nilly. Also, there's a provision in, in the agreement whereby the AAU has uh, agreed to provide uh, free muni passes to all their students and uh, employees and staff. So that's how it all fits together. Um, to your knowledge, does the Academy have any further growth plans? Well, it's, it's unclear at this point. Um, it, when we did the environmental impact report that was approved earlier this year, it does assume a certain amount of growth in the future. That's looking long term. And they looked at different parts of the city around their current clusters of buildings and where that growth might happen. Now, when, when it happens is not clear. So at this point, they, they do, I believe, that the family owns properties that the Academy is not using. And part of the agreement that you'll see is the shifting of some of the some of the uh, their uses from some properties to others that are closer together and clustered. One of our concerns from a, pl from a planning standpoint is that their uses were very far flung, and so this agreement helps to cluster those uses, having less impact on the transit system, as as the city attorney said, so that there's there's more clustering of uses. And how, and our hope and 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 what the EIR actually looks at is clustering those uses in places that are close to their existing. So you expect the university to continue to grow? I, I certainly, there's nothing to, to, to expect that they would not. Okay. One more question. Anybody? 
Are they going to have to get rid of their car collection? <laughs> Just kidding. Why, you need one? <laughs> yeah, I love one. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>